So I partner with Martin Kukana, who's the principal of Chapisa Primary School in Telbisa. Our school is a, is a non-fee paying school of some 900 kids. We started our partnership last year in February 2015 and just recently celebrated our first year together. My school has decent classrooms, decent toilets, no sports facilities, virtually no other amenities. The school provides a decent meal to all of those my other <coughs> kids and for many of them it's the only food they get in the day. Now in the schools I am used to and I guess many of you are used to, the principal would have a school governing body, an SGB, that would provide support and, and his, his, her SGB would consist of business people and attorneys and accountants and you know, IT people, all of which would, surpri would supply <coughs> support to the school and the principal. In my school, in Martin's school, um, the chairman of the SGB is a carpenter who lost his job 15 months ago. The treasurer is a lady who sells cool drinks from her home and she's therefore treasurer because she knows finance. Okay. And nine of the 12 people on the SGB are actually unemployed. So I believe and what PFP have done is provided the support. I believe I am the support, the part of the support that Martin desperately needs, otherwise doesn't have. So going back a year at our first meeting together, when I was arranging the meeting with Martin, I asked him to bring along his organization plan, his budget for the year, and his plan for the year. I mean, how, you know, what other, you know, that's what you need for a business meeting, isn't it? Yeah. And of course, he had none of those things. And when we actually sat down and over a couple of hours drew up an organization chart, we found that Martin had 26 people reporting directly to him. You know, if, if a security guard wanted some time off to go to the doctor, they would have to come to Martin to ask for that time. Okay, it was a crazy situation. Um, we were <coughs> able to restructure that, introduce some middle management. I'm not talking about extra people, but just by training some people, giving them some responsibility. We restructured that and <coughs> reduced his direct reports to eight people over time obviously a more acceptable situation. Martin had a phone that was issued to him by the department and he never let this phone out of his sight. Being an underperforming school, he was under pressure. Okay, and that phone was used often. It was his direct link to his, the various bosses that he had. So we set up a separate email address for the school. We, we, uh, we changed the communication channels and allowed the school admin office to deal with the many requests for information and queries and stuff that came from the district office. Also being a non-fee paying school, that meant that they received substantial funds from the department and they had to control these. Um, and this was done manually on almost like a petty cash basis, a petty <coughs> cash basis handling millions of rands. So little control or governance. We, we implemented an accounting system and that's largely enabled just simple controls. So this together with a with bunch of other measures we implemented in, enabled Martin to totally move his focus away from doing admin and enabled him to focus on the kids, okay, which is really where he needed to focus. So I guess that was all good stuff. I know the stuff as a, as a manager, but what do I know about schools and education? Very little almost. Assure you. And this is where the Symphonia model kicks in. Each business partner has a monthly meeting with a coach. When I told my kids this, they said, Who the hell is going to coach you? <laughs> 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 um, but that coach helps me to help my school. Okay. We, we also met every six weeks in a circle, our circle of 10 schools, each. each uh, circle meets um, and we discuss common problems and, and, and receive guidance at those meetings. And we also had monthly information sessions at Bits University on subjects of interest to the school. Martin and I also spent in total five full days on formal tra training courses together. You touched on those. 
These were professionally run courses, often outside facilitators, all of which required preparation. And it was great for me to see his eyes light up when he heard something that he could implement at his school um, to improve the relationships with his, his staff and his bosses. We were also required to draft and agree a plan. And this had to be formalized and checked by our coach to ensure that we were on the right track. Um, obviously, different business leaders bring different skills and expertise to their partnerships. So that coach has to make sure that all of those things are used to best advantage. I think in our school, we have achieved most of the plan we set out with at the beginning of the year maybe with the exception of the training of the SGB. We also haven't really involved our parents and our community more, but we do have plans to achieve those things this coming year. Although you originally sign up for a year, mm -hmm. most partnerships carry on, in some cases forever and ever. Right? <laughs> uh, some people fall in love. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Through West Bank, which, which has helped me to help my school in many ways, we arranged an HR intervention late last year. It was essentially done, it was a, a one day team building session at the start of the December school holidays. And we got all the staff together, the guards, the admin, the teachers, they'd never ever done that before. And it was brilliant. And we managed to um, get rid of the the clicks and the politics within the school, I'm, I'm hoping that, that, that certainly seemed the case. And each and every staff member committed themselves um, individually to improving and bettering uh, their personal contribution to that school, obviously to the total betterment of, of, of the kids. And I also want to say at this point, just I've learned how tough it is, how difficult it is to be a school principal <coughs> and how hard these people work, tough circumstances and what a privilege it has been to help in any way that I can. I just think this model works so well. Symphonia or Partners for, for Possibility are now in 400 schools and they need to do thousands more. All the various corporate social, corporate social involvement schemes are are donating serious money to many good causes. But this model follows up the money with expertise and experience and skills. And, then, and that, those things, I think, hopefully last forever and maximize the impact. So lastly, I'd just like to say how the program has impacted on me personally. <coughs> I've learned a bunch of things, including humility, <coughs> a new culture, listening, encouraging thinking, how to influence with no power. I believe in community and I've changed, I personally have changed, I think, from being what I call a complaining consumer <laughs> to an active citizen. And I'm just much more positive about South Africa and our future. As one of my colleagues said at our celebration, um, when he first rode into Tembisa, it was with some trepidation. Whereas at the end of the year, he was phoning home saying he was stopping off at the local Shabin. <laughs> <laughs> so as the leadership program for business leaders, I have found it life-changing. In exposure to many school principals, in all the training courses that I've been on, I've, I've met a whole bunch of school principals and a whole bunch of business leaders, and there's not one of them that doesn't rave about what they've learned and how they have benefited. And that's the way I feel. Thank you, Simpson.